Hello everyone and welcome. In this video I'm going to show you how to install a Hambini bottom bracket. We're going to use this bike which is a Cervelo S5 uh, to demonstrate the process. It has a, a B bright bottom bracket but the process is the same whether you've got a PF30 or a BB30 unit. It's a relatively straightforward process, it will only take about 10-15 minutes. So things you're going to need, um, to install the cranks you're going to need a park tool or an equivalent um, bottom bracket tool, it, you really only need that bit which is to load the preload nut. Torque wrench with a 5mm bit, uh, again this is probably optional, you could just get away with a, a 5mm allen key. Some cleaner, so I've got engine degreaser, but again you could just use um, some alcohol or something like that. A bottom bracket press tool, um, this one is one I made, but anything from sort of park tool or Unior or somewhere like that will be fine. Um, the other thing is some retaining compound. This is a bit optional, um, but I really like to do belt and braces jobs on bottom brackets to avoid creak. So again, Loctite 641, medium strength. Don't get the high strength, whatever you do, because you could destroy your bike frame. Feeler gauge, uh, again optional, and with the bottom bracket you get, well the bottom bracket, an install tool and two little cups um, which we'll come to at the end. Now there really is only one caveat with the Hambini bottom bracket and that's to make sure that you can see all the way through your bottom bracket. If you've got anything in here the, the Hambini bottom bracket is unsuitable. Now on this bike, which is an S5, uh, when it was originally out of the factory, we had some DI2 wires, which you can just see there. Uh, they were poking into this area here. So uh, what was done was um, the wires were taken apart and the junction box was moved and put into this little uh, cavity here. So the junction box is there. With that in mind, the first task is to make sure this is completely clean and that is very very important because we don't want to have any bottom bracket creak. So with some degreaser, just spray liberally inside, leave it for a couple of seconds and then just clean anything that's in the shell. And this is an important task. Just go around the other side. Make sure that's completely clean. You've removed all the residue, and there's no bits of fluff or anything like that. Now, the other thing to make sure is clean is this surface here, and it's only the drive side that you need to worry about because that's the uh, mating surface on this bottom bracket so just get rid of all any bits of dirt or muck that have accumulated now the cleaner I've used is fast acting so it dries quickly so that is actually now completely dry so the bottom bracket needs to be partially assembled, so this is the cartridge unit in my left hand and the spacer um, sleeve on the uh, non-drive side, they're actually identical but we're going to put this onto the non-drive side and click it in. It will be tight, because it's designed to be a good fit. Like that, it snaps in, give it a spin to make sure it's okay. If you look very, very carefully, this does protrude by half a millimetre from the, uh, the metal, and that is uh, normal. So we're just about ready to install the bottom bracket. Here's the press tool that I have with a 6806 or BB30 press adapter on. Um, get the bottom bracket and um, make sure there's no uh, spacer in there, no black sleeve. Place that onto the top. And then around to the other side, 
what we're going to have is we're going to have that first with that facing towards the drive side okay and then the handle to go on top so we'll have that assembly okay so I'm going to pause it there and then go around and then hook this up so here's a, a shot showing what we've got set up so we've got the handle there the 6806 pressed there the bottom bracket here the installation tool on that side and then the other handle on this side now all we have to do is actually just tighten this now, it will make some creaking noises as the bottom bracket goes in it will slacken off because the bottom bracket shell is slightly wider in the middle than it is on the edges so as it goes in it will get tight, uh, slacker when you get to a point where you can just about see this uh, surface here what we're going to do is we're just going to slacken it off and apply some retaining compound so we just slacken the two handles off On the drive side, you'll be able to see the, um, the, the mating surface, locating surface fairly easily. And we just literally put a bit of retaining compound in. That's probably a bit too much, but it'll run down the groove and in. Like that. On the non-drive side, we have to actually put the, uh, the retaining compound into the shell so put a bit on your finger and then rub it around the inside like that you don't need very much now the retaining compound's been put on and we just tighten up the press tool again if it starts to get really tight just slacken it off and just check what's going on so it was starting to get a bit tight there, so I'm just going to check. And it all looks fine, so we'll tighten it up again. Now, as you can see, on this side there's still a small gap. One of the key aspects to this is to make sure that is absolutely flush with this surface. One of the issues with Cervelo bottom brackets is this surface is not always even. So we're going to tighten it up now and then I'll show you what happens. Okay, that is home now. That will not go any further. Slacken it off a bit. like so don't take it off at this stage now if you have a piece of tin foil or a feeler gauge what's important is to check to make sure that you have no gap around the uh, bottom bracket so in my case right there there's a gap but as you go further round you can no longer get it in so that means that this bit of the bottom bracket is uh, sticking out further than this bit over here. That's not a problem, but you just need to check that you have got an area where it is completely bottomed out. So just to illustrate that business about the, uh, the, um, the gap again, if I get my feeler gauge in, you can see the feeler gauge is, is actually going in the gap there like that but further round there's no gap so we're going to just remove the press now
So I'll pull the press out the other side, the adapter out. So that's that was what was on the other side. Now we're ready to uh, put the cranks in. Before we do that, we need to put the drive side uh, spacer in. So that's literally just a case of pushing it in the hole, push it home. It's a tight fit. Give it a spin to make sure it's okay. Now we can put the uh, crank back through. So this is a Dura Ace crank, but whichever Shimano Holotech design that you've got, uh, the process is the same. So move the chain over the crank axle, put that through, and literally poke it through like so. Then wrap the chain around the chain ring and push the axle through. We're back round to the non-drive side now. On this side what we need to do is on these splines just here we need to apply a small amount of grease. So just a small amount of uh, multi-purpose grease. Then we get the crank arm with the pin up and turn this upside down like that and just slot that on. Once it's on then uh, what we need to do is push that pin down. Once the pin's down we need to put this preload nut back on. So to install the preload nut, I'm just using the Park Tool BBT9. Literally just screw that in. It only needs to be finger tight. That's tight. Then there's two pinch screws or pinch um, bolts. This one here and one on the other side. They need to be tightened to 12 to 14 Newton meters. So plenty of people just use an Allen key and get it tight, but I've got a torque wrench, so you just need to tighten it up fairly evenly. Not really much tension on there yet. It's quite important that you do them in a sequence. So give one five ratchets and then give the next one five ratchets. Because when you move from one to the next, you'll find they go slack. So we're almost there, so that one's done. It's done. That's a double check. Okay, so now we have it completely installed. So the Hamini bottom bracket is installed. Hopefully you will have installed it without any issues whatsoever. If you want to know how to take the bottom bracket out, please check out one of the other videos that I have. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe, use the button below. And if you have a comment, then please also submit that below. I'll do my best to answer the question.